Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sailor Moon Another Story playthrough, in which Sailor Mercury, all on her lonesome, um, tumbled down a mountainside at the moment she got to Switzerland. <laughs> and um, now that she's awake, she's going to go do hero things. Her objective is to find the light stone to go with Zoocyte's dark stone so that they can join together and form the true stone. The interesting thing about these four sections is that each um, Sailor Scout handles the stone that belongs to the general that they were in love with in their past life, at least according to the manga. This is entirely new information to them in the in the context of this game because the backstories of the four generals literally never came up in the 90s anime ever. So, yeah. The iciest spot in Switzerland. You see, I the told you there was an NPC spot. right over there who said that. What were you going to say? I said it's the slipperiest spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this entire town, two towns actually, is just inside a cave for some reason. <laughs> well, I suppose it's supposed to be like mountainous, like crevices mm -hmm. and canyons. They're in the valley. Because like there are caves within this cave-like area, but... Yeah, Hans's mother is sick. And Sam. So, Mercury, being an aspiring middle school student who wants to be a medical student that wants to be a doctor, thinks maybe she can help. Conveniently, she has prescription medicine on hand. Not prescription <laughs> medicine. Over-the-counter medicine on hand that's supposed to help with fevers. But of course, this is a hick-ass town. So Hans doesn't recognize it, and he only trusts medicine made by their local doctor. Because of course. Um, so instead of using the convenient fever medication that we have on hand, we have to go on an epic adventure to go find the doctor from the next village over who's not in. Of course, he's not in. That would be easy. Instead, he's at, he's wandering around a cave somewhere. To be fair, Lewis, would you trust a scantily clad teenage girl who fell off a mountain is totally fine? <laughs> no, but I trust a bottle of Tylenol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to find Dr. Schwartz. May the Schwartz be with you. His Schwartz is just as big as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're here on a quest to get a magic stone so that, like, the prince from the future doesn't die. But sure, we have time for a side quest. We're heroes. Never a time limit. Of course, it makes sense that Mercury is, you know, going out of her way to help someone who's deathly ill. It makes a little less sense when Sailor Jupiter decides to just play matchmaker um, on her quest. <laughs> this is like, okay, yeah, this guy who ate fish with her by the riverside is crushing on someone, and she's like, yeah, I'm gonna go over to the next village and try to help you meet, have your happy ending. I've got time. Why not? <laughs> okay. So whenever you're outside of the two main village areas, random battles are happening. Because, of course, it's that sort of section. So, basically, Mercury Aqua Mirage for groups, Shine Aqua Illusion for single targets. Fortunately, since we have Grind Be Gone in, um, we don't have too many... Um, we don't have too many battles to go until we're just one-shotting everything. Thankfully, the um, the game defaults to memory. That is its, so nice. Um, I didn't know at this point in the game that bubble spray didn't actually do damage. <laughs> so of course, I, I go and it. use bubble More spray. More bubble spray. <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> Well, you're, I just, you're, you're out of MP, so just attack, so. Yeah. 
But anyway, the, the cursor settings default to memory, so... There's a lot of spamming the same attack over and over in this game to get through random battles. Thankfully, you can just mash the confirm button and, and do that without much thought. It's like playing a clicker game on your phone, only 20 years too soon. <laughs> nah. Puzzle pieces. Slowly coming together. So what kind of mobile games would each of them play, now that I think about it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hmm. It's hard to say, because they'd be close to 30 by the time smartphones came out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the mobile gaming scene looks like in Japan, so... I mean, lots of gacha, so... Usagi would absolutely, well, yeah. Usagi would absolutely be into gacha. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like... I don't know what's popular, is what I'm saying. Fake Grand Order? Uh, because, like... Um... I know mobile gaming is bigger over there, purely as a consequence of... Uh, portable gaming being bigger mm -hmm. over there. But I, I don't know what, like... What kind of games people would routinely be just, you know, downloading on a whim and playing. So, there's a lot of people in this town willing to talk about Dr. Schwartz, but, like, the moment you find which of these uh, identical houses is at the doctor's office, you find out he's not actually in town. Which is, you know, kind of inconvenient. The doctor should probably be at the doctor's office when the doctor's office is open. But, uh, he's not. <laughs> anyway, the Swiss manicure mod. What it does is it replaces the Schwartz uh, medicine, Schwartz. which you can see in this item shop, with a manicure if you shop at the other at the other town's item shop. Basically, it gives you a way to buy the attack buffing item, which you're going to need for the boss of this of, of Sailor Mercury's section because the boss of Sailor Mercury's se section is miserable if you don't go into it knowing what you're get what you're getting into. By miserable, I mean I recorded it three goddamn times before I had a take that didn't take too long. Um Okay, so, yeah. Our mom's a big accessory collector. But I thought no one came here. Accessorizing <laughs> is of the utmost importance. Okay. You must accessorize. You just tell that to every stranger who walks into your house? <laughs> Girls like wearing accessories, right? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this house is full of people who are just waltzing in and saying, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Only it's like, how do you do, fellow high school girls? <laughs> um, no, middle school girls. I keep forgetting that, like, um, and, uh, Mercury actually like identifies herself as being fifteen in this in this very chapter. Now that I think about it, I am not going to explain the context of that. <laughs> Maybe I should try and make some medicine. Please don't. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's holed up in his cave, in his lab at the North Cave. Why do you have a lab in a cave? Sounds like an evil doctor. Uh, apparently, it's like he makes medicine from local um, plant life. So that would be why. There's a bit of a back and forth in this chapter. You have to go to the North Cave, find the doctor, escort the doctor back to the house. Then the doctor tells you that you need a special kind of moss. So you have to go back to the cave, go <laughs> further into the cave than you went the first time, find the moss. And then you find out that the light stone was there, but then it fell down a hole. So you have to go back to the house, give the moss to the doctor so that he can make medicine for the woman. And then you go back to the cave, <laughs> go to the hole, find out that the hole is too steep to climb down, so you go back out of the cave and then go around the cave to another cave that's behind the cave, and then you go into that cave and find the rock. Stone. Thing. It's not the best structured area in the world. 
It gives you a lot of opportunities to fight random battles and level up, though. So that I guess might, we don't have to worry about Sailor Mercury being underleveled when she rejoins the party. I'm gonna say, I think that might have been the idea, but... Mm -hmm. But, like, imagine going through that whole runaround without the Grind Be Gone mod on. You'd be fighting random battles every five steps. It'd be like the... It'd be like Mount Moon... <laughs> Accepts everywhere. I mean, we are in a cave at a mountain, so I guess it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, the random battles are everywhere. <laughs> everywhere between the towns and outside the caves and inside the caves. So. And. And unfortunately, Sailor Mercury is not the best equipped to be dealing with random battles on her own. But what gets me is that we have these sections, like... Immediately after the game spends a good while introducing us to party combat with link techs and everything. So it's like... <laughs> I like these sections conceptually, but... Maybe they, maybe they'd be better off later on in the game or something. Now, I think it, it's like because it's all happening back to back and so early on, we have this whole chunk of the game after a mechanic for team for team combat was introduced in which those mechanics are just absent. So it's kind of awkwardly paced in that way. Oh my god, a treasure chest. That said, I do like these sections where you play as one character and just focus on them for a little while. It reminds me of the Wild Arms games, actually. Um, in the Wild Arms games, you start the game with a set of prologues where you play as each party member in turn and go through a little, like, one-hour adventure as each of them. Um, oh, so it's kind of Octopath Traveler in a way. In a way, yeah. Well, Wild Arms had this as a tradition for the first three games where they would just let you pick one of the party members and you'd go through that little adventure. It introduces the character and their place in the world and um, also gives you like uh, tutorials bit by bit on different mechanics. Like if you were to play as Virginia, you would learn a bit more about tools. If you were to play as Jet, you'd learn a bit more about like uh, uh, certain combat and dungeon mechanics, that kind of thing. It all works well. It's a good thing Dr. Schwartz's cave office laboratory has a Luna P in it. <laughs> Very convenient. Why does he have this thing here? <laughs> it, it just appeared there and he just comes in one day and sees it and just doesn't question it. He's a little, he's a little too <laughs> weirded out to ask questions. So... I haven't discovered the formation system yet. <laughs> I mentioned this in an earlier part, but uh, I should reiterate it here. If you want to get through battles faster, you really should have Mercury like up at the front of the Arrowhead formation so, so that she's doing more damage. Um, but like, <laughs> I guess you guys don't have to suffer with me because I edited past most of the random battles, but it did significantly slow me down. I didn't find out about the formation system until I was looking up ways to make the boss at the end of this section less bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out being at the front of the formation is one of the most important things. Mm. By the way, did you know Mercury can actually inflict damage on things? I know, it's crazy. <laughs> That's sleep animation. <laughs> the stupid snot bubble. <laughs> oh boy, we got two alarm clock. Alarm clock. Um, alarm <laughs> no, al click. Alarm <laughs> click. <laughs> All of these monsters have alarm clocks, and I don't know why. <laughs> Is this supposed to be a reference to the clock shop episode, or what? Do you have a ring for... Excuse me, sir. Do you have a ring from a Cracker Jack box? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is anime? 
And that there is an old man in anime. So by law, he must be mm -hmm. eccentric and also perverted. <laughs> I don't know why that's a trope. You'd think a guy's libido would have calmed down at that age. But, it you know, excels. apparently <laughs> apparently in anime land, the opposite happens. Uh, Heart? It takes him oh my it takes God. Him that long to know. <laughs> yup. Uh, quit saying he. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Slowly back away. Excellent. I told you I wouldn't explain the context for that, and, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> of course it's Mercury who has to deal with this asshole. Cause like, any of the others would have just punched him in the face by now. Virgo the Virgin? <laughs> Mercury, of course, is much too nice. She was actually about to humor him with an answer. <laughs> okay, so back to business. Sick person. Back in the town. Please come with me to town so we can help sick person. Am I communicating clearly? Thankfully, he quits the stupid, perverted old man act, basically the moment uh, business, you know, is brought up, so. And at least he has something of a good reason for it, considering, you know, <laughs> random monsters. I'm going on a date. <laughs> that is, thankfully, the last time this comes up. Anyway, we have two sapphire accessories now. Uh, I... Wrong button. <laughs> I hit the start button thinking it would be the menu button, but the start button brings up the, the link attack button, which is just fucking perfect, because the moment you've l unlocked all the link attacks, which you probably did all at once, um, you have no reason to use that menu anymore. <laughs> anyway, the... Except there are two accessories for every Sailor Scout in all in in all of these sections, and those accessories, their item descriptions say stuff like attack up or speed up or whatever, but they actually raise multiple stats per accessory. So they're basically better than anything that that you can get for these characters. So just put them both on, and then use your third slot for whatever else you want to boost. Puzzle piece. Yeah, another puzzle oh. piece. But I want more orange, Jay. It's really no convenient that every store in this mountain in this mountain village in Switzerland accepts yen as a currency. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take anything and everything. Will you okay. take? Will you take some orange, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to sell you this bottle of orange juice, please. No, it's a giant. No, we've established, Louis, it's a giant orange J, cardboard J. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> Take this giant letter. All right. Oh, Hans. So because we have a bit of melodrama here, all of a sudden the game wants you to believe that that Hans and Sailor Mercury have a connection. <laughs> or at least that Hans has a crush on Mercury, and Mercury might have a crush on Hans back, but maybe not. But like, they've known each other for a collective ten minutes. <laughs> let's 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 remember that. They've had like one actual conversation. Yeah. And it <laughs> So Why the place we just were? <laughs> I get where that's coming from because, like, they want each of the Sailor Scouts to have some kind of emotional connection with the people they interact with on their adventure. But, like, for some, it works better or worse than others. Like, I like the Sailor Mars section because, you know, 
there's some stuff that goes down in that section that, you know, would leave someone a bit shaken. The Mercury section is just kind of okay. It's pretty standard. Jupiter's is... Hmm. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll get to that when we get to it. Man, I'm just escorting every guy around town right now. Yeah. Noom. I like how a recurring thing in these solo Sailor Scout quest things is that, like, someone always decides that they don't want to let the, you know, teenage girl go off on her own to fight monsters. But no one ever, no one who escorts these girls around ever comments on the elemental magic powers that they use to kill the monsters. No one ever seems to notice it. It's like an old school Persona Shin Megami Tensei game where once you're in a random battle, you're like enclosed in a circle or something and no one can see you. Uh, it's like in Persona 2, you're running through a crowded and fully active high school having random battles in the hallway and no one comments on it. Which is weird, because uh, SMT5 does the exact opposite. Everyone knows what you're doing in that game. Well, mainline SMT has the, has that thing where you're always like in a post-apocalyptic world. No, I know. It's, it's, like, it's just weird that it's like one series will be like, no, we can't have anyone know anything about this, and then SMT's like, I'm just running around the school fighting demons. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> um, it's like in Persona 2... The demons attack you in, like, totally public places, you know? So it's, it's like, really weird. Anyway, there's the Hailspring moss we need. Look at that climb. <laughs> He's climb <laughs> climbing entirely with his arms. Oh, oh God. Conveniently timed earthquake. <laughs> I'm all right. I only feel like two feet. It wasn't like the 30,000 feet drop you took. Yeah. So, oh. there's the magic stone we're looking for. Okay, just grab it and go. Just grab it and uh -oh. go. I mean, I'd love to, but suddenly the cave started shaking. Uh. That... That's not how rocks be. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect circle. Perfectly... Perfectly circular hole just appears in the ground. That's not how that works. Let's go fix up your mom. It's a rock. It's not going anywhere. I mean, unless there's another earthquake and another hole opens up and... It just so you know what, let's just here. get this over with so that, like, that doesn't happen. So yeah, uh, back the way we came, again. Pow. Alarm clerk. So many alarm <laughs> clerks. <laughs> Are we just don't get like, around with old-fashioned <laughs> alarm clocks. It's like Sailor Mercury gets back to Japan after her trip to Switzerland. She's like, yeah, I got I got Zoicite's Lightstone, but more importantly... Look these My clocks. alarm clock collection from Switzerland. <laughs> you gotta see it, girls. <laughs> oh, just like cuckoo clocks or something. <laughs> and then, like, she just sets them all up in her bedroom. <laughs> Every single one of them. That would be so tedious to turn off all of those. <laughs> Regrets it the next morning because she <laughs> because they all go up at once. Uh, that one didn't have an alarm clock. I'm disappointed. Another one. Oh, for frick's sake! No alarm clocks there. Damn it. Okay, so we're so our alternate universe interpretation of of uh, Mercury is just she loves clocks. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think that would be Pluto, guardian of time and all. Yeah. No, our alternate universe interpretation of Pluto is that she loves Mickey's dog a whole lot. 
Well then, I'll make the medicine at once. There's got to be some specialized equipment in this house somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Shoves the moss down her throat. <laughs> I like to imagine this guy just has a mortar and pestle shoved into his lab coat pocket. <laughs> So, Mercury just sort of quietly pieces out at this point. Okay. She's got other duties. He's just like, you know, emotions. What are you going to do about them? Glug, glug, glug. I magically healed. She is oh magically God, healed. She is magically healed. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> the way that animated, it's like they cured her petrification. Yeah. <laughs> we brought, we found the super soft doctor. Can you make medicine from it? Um. Aw. Aw. Bye, Hans. Bye, Hans. It's hard to leave this random guy I've known for five minutes. <laughs> Okay, giving the story as it stands credit, they did go to a cave together and, you know, collect Hailspring moss or whatever, but, mm -hmm. you know, there were no conversations or any interactions on the way, so you just kind of have to fill in the blank mentally. Like, what would this look like as an anime episode? There'd probably be shenanigans. Lots of shenanigans. Mm-hmm. All right. Before we go, well, first of all, we're going to save. But we have some preparations that we need to make before we hit the last leg of this chapter. Sub-chapter. Mini-chapter. Mission. Quest. Thank you.